Welcome back to the channel. We're making a couple skid steer attachments. So this is just kind of what I came up with using a cheap, uh, the cheapest add-on hitch that I could find. I'm putting it on a half inch plate, uh, skid steer plate, and then uh, and then a bunch of death toll gussets that I don't actually have for sale yet, but uh, eventually we're going to sell them. Um, they're kind of a cool looking gusset uh, and they're very structural. Um, there's a, a bunch of rhyme and reason for the curves and all that stuff. So, uh, but anyway, I'm using a dual shield ESOB 7100 wire. Um, this is a dual shield wire. So it has flux like, like stick welding as well as you use gas. So the flux doesn't do the shielding. Um, it's just slowing the cooling down and drawing impurities out of the weld so that uh, it, is it'll end up being a more elastic weld. It won't be so brittle uh, because the cooling gets slowed by that flux. Um, and it's just a very clean and really nice looking way of welding um, if you have the opportunities. The only drawbacks to that is the it is very picky, kind of like TIG welding. You need to have a very clean surface and everything for it. So um, there so there are drawbacks, uh, but um, if you have nice clean parts, it works pretty good. So when I first put this adapter together, which is linked to this will be at the end of the video. Um, the handles don't stay up on their own, so it's really frustrating to uh, hook attachments up. So I'm just drilling a hole through the handle and through the plate, uh, and then I'm just going to add a nut and bolt to the handle so that it will. you can just lift the handle up and uh, drop it into the hole so it, it just stays that way. So you can see it there. Um, it works pretty good. Um, I don't know why they don't make those handles so they stay up on their own, but they don't. So here is the... Our little attachment uh, all complete and working. Um, it works pretty good. So there we have it. Uh, moves trailers around real nice. Uh, and that, that'll just be easy. Um, I usually use my tow truck. I got a rollback with a wheel lift. Um, that's easy as well, but uh, it's not as easy as this. So um, that worked out pretty good. So now we're going to start on forks. So this is the fork rack that was uh, a hodgepodge thing together uh, on the old... Uh, plate that we used for our adapter. So we're going to get this thing going, uh, get it on there, and we will figure out how to make it work. If I were to just put this on there flat, I would never be able to tip my forks back. So that's why they have them angled out. Um, I don't know what this originally was. I actually think um, looking at these plates, I'm pretty sure this was a rack for a normal Bobcat, and that's the old pocket. Um, and, and that measures out just about right. Um, but the problem is I don't have any of the bottom stuff. So I would either had to make something like this um, and then I would be relying just on the flat strap and stuff to be rigid enough side to side. So I figure this is going to be better and then I can add, add a little bit more in reinforcement and everything. And this is a half inch uh, plate backstock. So those, I just got that one shipped to my door. It was 169 bucks from Amazon. There's a link in the description below for that. Okay, so I'm just kind of cleaning all the edges that we need to weld, um, and then I'm just going to stick weld this because this is all such rusty metal. Um, I'm going to be using 7014, um, which is uh, kind of just a farm weld, uh, uh, farm rod. They work pretty good. Um, this is a shoot -a light There's a link to this in the description below, but it is by far the best way to have fun lighting your torch. So... All right, and the reason I'm doing that is because this rack was bent. Um, so I'm heating it on the side that we're trying to bend it to. All right, well, our hitch paid for itself already being used as a little jib boom. Um, but uh, that's just a piece of two-inch square tube that I have in the hole um, that I'm going to use as its little kickstand. So it's like a galvanized tube. I don't know. It's just left over from something else. But it worked pretty good for that. Now I'm removing the lock pins on those forks because there's actually no detents for them to go into. So they're uh, just add one more level of hassle uh, to this thing. This is not the smoothest working rack in the world uh, by any means. Um, and then there was no way of locking the forks on there. So I went ahead and... Uh, drill the holes in the corner so we can just run a bolt in so that way the fork can't slide off the side um, without putting through a decent amount of force. Those are just 3 8 grade 8 bolts. Uh, so there it is. Uh, it worked. Uh, the forks do not slide easily at all so moving them is a complete pain in the butt and usually uh, includes using a hammer. Okay so this is a 40 foot high cube um, and it is full. I know for a fact that my 6,000 pound forklift could only pick this end of the this end of a container up if it were empty and I would have to go up and then tilt back. That's the only way I get my 6,000 pound forklift to go. So the likelihood of this skid steer picking this up is zero. Um, however, we can see if anything's flexing or anything on the on the setup we just made. 
um, so that uh, we know for a fact that it's not going to fail. So I, I didn't expect it to do that. I knew it was 100% failure, but I saw, and I'm mean, gonna have to review the video, but I didn't see any deflection or feel any deflection in my front end. So that's good, that's that's what I wanted. Um, when it's out here, obviously it's a little bouncy and that's the fork flexing. When I had it all the way in, really it was just tire and then lifting the, the back of the uh, skid steer up. So um, that's good. I know for a fact that when this is empty, uh, my, my backhoe can pick it up. Um, pretty easily. Okay, I have to voice over this part because I'm really dumb. Uh, what I'm telling you here is I made a tongue for the front of a shipping container so that we can tow it like a trailer. Um, and I also have a set of spindles and wheels that I've actually used before I built them when we were moving. Um, and I can kind of, I'll, I'll show you what I did on those to at least give you an idea uh, so that you can make some yourself. Um, but they they work pretty good on flat ground, but it does make me nervous on this. Uh, our terrain here is not flat at all. Um, so it makes me a little nervous uh, using those on our on our terrain. But uh, so it could be an epic fail video. Hopefully not. Uh, I want to try to get that done before this winter. So cross your fingers and those should that video hopefully will be coming out here in a month or so.